Hi there. Um, we are going to start the webinar in a couple of seconds. We see that we do have some attendees, but we will wait a couple more seconds just to make sure there are no stragglers. A couple more seconds just to make sure we do want to start on time. Cool, um, so we will go ahead and get started. Hi there, and welcome to our January webinar, Using the Microsoft Power Platform, a real world example for associations. I'm Annie Hall, a software product generalist at Cobalt, and I am joined by Maddie Sapinko, another software product generalist. Today's webinar will be a little bit different than usual. If you've attended one of our previous webinars, you're probably familiar with the general outline we usually take 30 minutes to show off the different corners of our solution and how we can help associations be more effective. We've had the chance to show off things like engagement scoring, identifying at-risk members, and using Microsoft Teams for committee management. However, we are especially excited about today's webinar because of the story behind it. Every year, Cobalt hosts a company-wide corporate retreat. One of the major focuses of the retreat is innovation. We want to dedicate time to finding new and better ways to serve our clients. Cobalt employees work with associations and certification bodies day in and day out. We've seen it all. We know the usual workflows, processes, and of course, the usual pain points. We are constantly combining our understanding of typical membership or certification business processes with our advanced technological knowledge to create solutions to problems organizations are not even aware can be addressed through software. For one day during this year's retreat, Cobalt employees were given the opportunity to really focus that expertise via a hackathon. Cobalt employees were split into five teams. Every team had people from each department. We had everyone from human resources to support involved. The goal of the hackathon was this. Each team needed to build a solution to solve a problem currently plaguing associations or certification boards. The hackathon only had three rules. Each solution needed to be applicable to membership or certification organizations. Each solution needed to use at least two of Microsoft's Power Platform applications. And side note, if you aren't familiar with Power Platform, the basic premise is Microsoft has invested billions of dollars into applications that allow business users to build their own solutions in a no-code or low-code environment. And the third rule, no code allowed. There are tons of good ideas. For example, one team used customer voice, Microsoft surveying and voting tool to collect votes for a board of directors election. But unfortunately, there could only be one winner. The winning solution was a matching tool that made it easy for members to connect with other members based on a profile they filled out. And this is what we wanna share with you today. Associations have always offered great networking opportunities, both formally and informally. However, the pandemic has made that more difficult. Between video conferencing fatigue and strained resources, those same relationships are a lot harder for associations to foster virtually. And as you all know, highly engaged members are much more likely to renew their membership come due season. So the winning team wanted to find a way to use technology to keep members feeling connected to one another in these virtual settings. The winning team used Power BI and Power Automate to design a solution that acts as a matching service for professional networking. Here's how it works at a high level. People create a profile with certain things like their job title, industry, et cetera. Then once they've set up their profile, they can submit match requests where they detail the qualities of a person they're looking to network with. The solution then goes through all the profiles and finds a profile that matches the criteria in the request. The great thing about the solution is it requires very little upkeep. An organization could set it up once and never think about it again, but it will continue to provide value to members. So this is what we're gonna show you today and throughout we'll illustrate how the Power Platform allows you to create these types of applications with no coding required. So let's go ahead and hop into the demo. We are now looking at an example of Cobalt's portal, which is available to all of our clients. The portal provides a way for members to interact with an association. 
Contacts can apply for membership, register for classes or meetings, purchase an item from the online store, et cetera. In this example, we've logged into the portal as Martha Hall. Martha is an active member of our association. Martha can log in and see quick information about her membership, her join date, last renewal date, and expiration date. She can also see the address and email the association has on file for her and update that information if needed. All of that functionality is completely out of the box. Cobalt is well versed in the main functions of most associations, so we've made it so association staff can set up things like membership applications and event registrations with just a few clicks. However, sometimes associations have unique offerings that product, Cobalt's product doesn't have configured out of the box. Maybe your association has scholarships available for student members and you want to make that application process available on the portal. Or maybe you want to create a membership match service. Because our solution is built on Dynamics 365, it's extremely configurable. So in these instances, business users at your organization can simply configure the solution without any code and with any help from Cobalt to address these more specific needs. All the tabs at the top of the page, the events, committees, my orders, those all appear outside, completely out of the box. However, the membership match tab, the focus of today's webinar, is a web element. Web elements are the way Cobalt's solution accommodates organization-specific processes without any custom development. Web elements are a large part of how the winning team was able to make the membership match process possible. Let's go ahead and walk through how the team envisioned this process to work. Contacts who are interested in taking advantage of this service would set up a profile specific to the matching service by going to the Membership Match tab and click, clicking Submit Profile. The winning team envisioned the membership match service as both a membership engagement and recruitment tool. So they opted to make this a free service for members and decided to charge non-members a small fee. The hope for non-members is once they start to network with other members and learn more about association happenings, they will become part of the community and will want to be involved in parts of the association that are for members only. For example, they would, maybe they meet someone who holds a leadership position on a members only committee. The non-member learns more about the committee and wants to get involved, so they apply for membership with the association. The new service acts as a recruitment tool, and because we're charging non-members for the service, it also creates a new non-dues-related revenue stream. Because we are logged into the portal as a member, there's no sign-up fee. By showing the non-member price, we are subtly reminding our members the value of their membership. Okay, so we are a member of the association, but we have not enrolled in the membership matching service. Let's go ahead and complete the first step. We need to set up our MM profile. You can see we're taken to this form where we are asked to fill out information about ourselves. We've decided to capture information about experience, professional role, the type of networking relationships the contact is interested in, but all of these questions are completely configurable. Organizations can create a form without any help from Cobalt using Cobalt's form designer. Before we submit our membership match profile, we want to quickly show you what the form designer actually looks like. The form designer is extremely easy to use. You can choose which questions to ask and specify the format of the answer. You can see there are tons of different options. You can configure the questions so they are optional or required. Users can also break up long forms by creating different sections and pages to improve the user experience. The form designer makes it so your staff can easily create and update forms without ever needing to contact IT. Now that we've seen what the form designer looks like, I think that is better now. Perfect. Sorry about that. Um, you could see we are taken to a form where we're asked to fill out information about ourselves. We've decided to capture information about experience, professional role, the type of networking relationships the contact is interested in. Um, but these questions are completely configurable. Um, perfect. So now we are back on the portal. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up our MM profile. For the sake of this demo, let's say we are a consultant with expertise in technology. Because we only have two years of experience, we don't feel comfortable mentoring others. 
We just want to be a potential mentee. We are now given a chance to review our answers. We can change our answers by going back, or we can click edit and answer the and edit the answer right within the summary page. We'll go ahead and submit our MM profile. Because this is a short form, we won't get a lot of people saving and coming back to it later, but that's also an out of the box feature available for all forms. Once we submit that profile, the MM record profile record is automatically created in our CRM and is added to our database of contacts who have opted into the service. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the staff end. Once we refresh this page, that should appear. Perfect, so you'll see that right at the top. You can see the MM profile we just submitted appears in this queue for association staff. All the data entered in on the portal is in one easy to find place. In this case, technology is tagged as the area of expertise, the job role is marked as a consultant, and just as we entered on the portal, this member is interested in being a mentee. Once a contact has created an active MM profile, they can start submitting match requests. They're not limited to one match request. They can connect with multiple people simultaneously. This is really great for two reasons. If a contact is working on a particular project and they want guidance from someone with a specific area of expertise, they can submit a new request with this information. This new request won't divorce them from other matches, it'll just create a new one. This design also allows people to have larger networks. If a contact uses the matching feature frequently, they would have a larger people, group of people to network with. We've also used an out-of-the-box configuration to limit who can submit a request. So only contacts with that active MM profile can submit MM requests. Now that we've set up our own MM profile, we can start submitting match requests. Let's go ahead and walk through how a person with an active MM profile would submit a request. You can see here we are presented with this other fee page. We've configured this process to charge a not charge non-members a one-time profile setup fee. And once they've paid that fee, they can submit an unlimited number of requests free of charge. But if you did want to make it so people you were charging people on a per request basis, you can definitely set that up. You can see here we are presented with a form that's similar to the MM profile setup, but there are a couple of different couple of differences. During the MM profile setup, the form was configured to ask questions about the contact themselves. Now you can see these request questions are aimed at creating a solid match. We're asking about the relationship type. Is this person looking for a mentor or are they looking for someone who's interested in doing some general networking? We are also asking the preferred job role of the match. If the contact is interested in matching with an international member, along with a couple of other questions. Let's say our contact is seeking out a mentor who holds a job as an attorney. For now, we want to match with someone in the United States because we want to match with someone with experience in US employment law. So we'll go ahead and say we're not interested in connecting with an international member. And you'll see again, we are um, presented with a summary page where we can edit our answers, very similar to that MM profile setup, um, but we're gonna go ahead and submit the request. And once this um, request goes through, we will be taken to our receipt page. And once that membership match is submitted, the really cool part kicks off. The match request is sent through our, mat our matching automation tool. If you're familiar with Microsoft's Power Automate, then this page probably looks familiar. If not, no big deal, we can get you up to speed. Power Automate is Microsoft's automation tool. In the simplest of terms, this is how organizations can set up varying levels of automation. Organizations can basically set up their own if-then statements that will trigger workflows or actions. This might look a little bit scary at first, but fear not, Power Automate is mostly drag and drop. It's really designed for business users. However, Power Automate isn't just for CRM. This is a great tool for processes within CRM. Um, let's say you want to send contacts a survey after they attend a class so your organization can get some real-time feedback. A business user can easily set up a process with Power Automate to automatically send the survey once the contact's class registration record is marked as attended. 
However, Power Automate isn't just for CRM. It's a business application that can be leveraged throughout your organization. A really good example of a non-CRM related task that can be automated through Power Automate is social media intel. Let's say your organization's social media coordinator sets time aside each week to manually go through tweets that mention your organization. The coordinator records all tweets with a negative sentiment in a shared Excel document. The coordinator then drafts responses to these tweets and sends the drafts to the social media director for approval. Once they get approval, they tweet out the responses. One of the great features included in Power Automate is Microsoft Sentiment Analysis. Your organization can set up an automation that leverages these AI capabilities and automatically emails staff when a negative tweet that mentions your organization is posted. The sky is really the limit here. We set up our automation to do a couple of different things. When an MM request is submitted, the automation will kick off. It will read information from the request, so information that we submitted on that portal, like the requested role, the international preference, et cetera. Then it will start to go through the active MM profiles to find a match. For our example, if the person who made the request is looking for a mentor who is an attorney with 10 or more years of experience in the technology sector, the automation will find an active MM profile for an attorney in the technology sector with at least 10 years of experience who is seeking a mentee. So we're matching that mentor and mentee relationship. If the submitted request says the person is looking for someone to just generally network with who also has less than two years of experience, the automation will find an active MM profile for someone who is also looking for a general networking relationship with someone who has less than two years of experience. I know this sounds complicated. Um, the querying and matching aspect of the automation is insanely powerful and easy to set up. Staff aren't going to spend any extra time combing through Excel spreadsheets trying to manually match people. It's all done within this automation. This automation tool also eliminates any potential bias from staff. They're not going to be matching people, the same people over and over again. As we've discussed, there is some setup involved. Organizations need to decide which questions they want to ask participants to create those portal facing forms we were looking at earlier. But once the setup is complete, staff don't need to touch anything. The entire process is automated. Another really cool part about this is you can add approval steps if you want for certain scenarios. This hackathon team decided that they wanted to design the solution. So if an MM request specifies the person is looking for a mentor, the mentor needs to approve the request before the contacts are actually matched. In this case, we've designed it so the potential mentor is doing the actual approval. However, maybe your organization wants to set this up so a staff member always needs to approve the match before it is finalized. You can definitely do that too. All you would need to do is send the approval email to a staff member instead of the mentor. Because the MM request we submitted on the portal was seeking a mentor, we need that mentor to agree to taking on a mentee. They must approve the match. Let's go ahead and see what this approval request looks like. The approval request is sent right to the mentor's inbox. You can see there's basic information about the request right in that email, along with the specific details from the potential mentee's MM profile. As the approver, we can either approve or reject the request. If we reject the request, the requester will never know. They'll just get sent through the querying and matching part of this automation again, and they'll get matched with someone else. However, let's go ahead and approve this match. Once the request gets approved, the request will get linked to that match profile and the request will be deactivated. We will also send out an email to the requester letting them, them know that they have a new match and prompting the requester to send their new match an email. Another feature of this matching process is all of the contacts matches will appear in their My Connections grid on the portal. Because this is Martha's first match, her connections list will contain just this one new connection. However, for demo's sake, let's say that Martha's new mentor has been part of the program for a better part of a year and has tons of matches. His connections list continues to grow. This contact Hopefully that's a little bit better. Um, this contact grid is great for a couple of different reasons. This serves as a visual reminder that these relationships exist because of your association. It shows the value of your organization without any extra marketing efforts. This grid shows all matches, so contacts won't forget about older matches when they get a new one. The more people 
a person is actively engaging with because of your organization, the less likely they are to cut ties with your, organ your association. The last reason this grid is great is because contacts need to log into the portal to access this grid. Once they log into the portal, they might notice an intriguing upcoming class on the portal homepage. They might even register for it. If they hadn't logged into the portal looking for that list of connections, they might not have registered for the class. Event revenue increases and so does member engagement. The membership match tool is a great way for associations to foster stronger relationships among their membership without any adding any extra responsibilities for staff. It is also one more service that you can promote to your members come due season. The membership match service also comes with another benefit, data collection. You can take the information that people are providing you with during the request process and feed that into something like Power BI for easy analysis. If you aren't familiar with Power BI, we're excited to be the ones to show you. Power BI is Microsoft's data visualization tool. You can do some really cool in-depth analysis with it and the visuals are amazing. Cobalt's out-of-the-box product comes with some pre-built Power BI dashboards for quick access to things like member retention rate or member conversion rate. But let's go ahead and look at the dashboard that we've configured to analyze data from our matching service. The dashboard on the screen Oh, actually, this is perfect. Um, you can embed Power BI reports right into Microsoft Dynamics like you're seeing here. This is a great feature that makes it so people aren't hunting around for the information they need. It's all in Dynamics. The dashboard on the screen is summarizing that MM request data. Um, you can see what we have this quick card that's just counting the number of requests we receive, along with a map of the requester's location and a list of the top 10 requesters. Towards the bottom of the report, we have a couple of different slicers we can apply. Power BI reports are dynamic, so if we filter by one of these slicer options, the entire report will update based on that selection. We can start analyzing our data by selecting one of these filters. Let's go ahead and pretend that I'm a staff member at an association and I want to use this data to improve our event offerings. Let's say we want to see how many requests are coming in for someone with an expertise in consulting. You can see that those top three visuals updated. It looks like only 13 requests have come in with that requested area of expertise. That doesn't really seem like that many. But what about technology? Oh wow, it looks like there have been 69 requests for a connection with someone with an expertise in technology. That's a lot more than consulting. Maybe I should give our education department a heads up that it might be time to host a virtual webinar with a technology emphasis. Let's look at the different kinds of relationships people are looking for around the country. So focus your attention on that middle uh, visual. Let's see where the majority of people who are just looking to do some general networking are located. It looks like there are a lot of people in that South Carolina area looking to do some general networking. Maybe I should reach out to our South Carolina affiliate chapter to see if they would wanna co-host a virtual happy hour. I also wonder if there are any trends in the locations of people who are looking for employment. Hmm, it looks like there are a lot of people in the Kentucky, Indiana area that are looking for employment opportunities. Maybe we could work on getting a resume work, writing workshop scheduled with some HR people from the area. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Power BI offers so many different types of visuals and you can decide what data you want to see and how you want to see it. You can use this data to better adapt your event offerings. Your members will be much happier with these tailored offerings and will be much more likely to renew come due season. Other staff members will also thank you. The events team won't spend time planning events with low interest. Instead, they'll be able to focus on events where we know that there will be a ton of interest, like a class on technology. As we wrap up things for today, I wanna to make sure that you leave with three main takeaways. The first one is your AMS should be able to accommodate new programs and services without months of custom development. The solution we showed you today was created without any custom code. We are able to take advantage of Cobalt's flexible product offerings and combine it with Microsoft's Power Platform to create a solution in just a couple of hours. The second thing is associations should be able to leverage any data they can get from their members and use that data to improve the member experience. Trust me, your membership retention rates will thank you. And the last thing, the 
Microsoft Power Platform, when combined with Cobalt's product and employee knowledge, can be a potent, powerful tool to help your association provide va better value to your members. Cobalt's always taking pride and constantly seeking out new ways that we can help our clients succeed. If you have any questions or if you are interested in seeing anything else that we showed off um, today on the in this demo in a more in-depth demo, um, please send us an email at sales at cobalt.net. Um, and thanks again for coming and big thanks to the Yellow team for this great solution. Thanks so much, guys.